Hello everyone, welcome to Group 15's presentation on conformity, mastering our social movements, presented by Jonathan Hobson, Juana Martinez, Blake Myers, and Raina Patel. Today, we delve into the phenomenon of conformity, highlighting the renowned Ash Conformity Study. This exploration will reveal the profound impact of social influence on our thinking and decisions, showing how the pressure to conform can sometimes overpower individual judgment. Our focus will be on three main areas, the effects of conformity observed in the Ash experiment, the role of culture in shaping conformity, and the interplay between morality and conformity. Through this presentation, we aim to provide a comprehensive understanding of how social norms and expectations drive our actions and shape our perception of reality. Hello everyone. Today, I'd like to tell you about a fascinating psychological experiment, the Ash Experiment. This experiment was conducted by psychologist Solomon Ash in the 1950s and explored the power of social pressure on an individual's judgment and behavior. The question is, how does social pressure affect an individual's judgment and behavior? In this experiment, participants were presented with a simple task, to match one of three lines to a target line in length. But there's more to this task. Not all participants were in on the true nature of the experiment. Some were unknowingly part of a group that had been instructed to give the wrong answer. This setup paves the way for a fascinating insight into the power of social pressure. Before we move on to what was discovered through this social experiment, take a moment to ask yourself, what would I do in that situation? Keep that thought as we reveal the findings. The results of the experiment were quite revealing. When alone, most participants gave the correct answer. When participants were surrounded by a group that unanimously chose an incorrect line, about 75% conformed to this incorrect choice at least once. This significant finding sheds light on the strength of social influence. It shows us that individuals can be swayed by peer pressure to the extent that they are willing to dismiss their own perceptions and knowledge. These results underscore a profound truth about human behavior. Social pressures can greatly influence us, compelling us to conform to group norms even when they contradict our own senses. Reflect on how this understanding of conformity can inform our choices and our interactions within groups. How can we maintain the integrity of our own judgments while still valuing the collective wisdom of the groups to which we belong? I want to tell you about a fascinating meta-analysis of research on culture and conformity conducted by Bond and Smith in 1996. Research in this area has had quite mixed results. Some studies have found the cultural differences in conformity that were expected. For example, that collectivist cultures like China show higher rates of conformity compared to individualistic cultures like the U.S. However, other studies have failed to find these anticipated cultural differences or have even found the reverse pattern. These inconsistent findings are problematic because the comparisons made across cultures are often confounded by issues like differences in the procedures or samples used. There are also typically no assessments made of what cultural values might actually be influencing conformity. So, Bond and Smith took a different approach. They conducted a quantitative meta-analysis to synthesize all the existing research and control for moderating factors. Their review encompassed two perspectives cross-cultural comparisons of conformity rates in different countries, as well as analyses of how conformity may have changed over time, especially in Western societies. Now let's move on to the main conclusions from this meta-analysis. Bond and Smith found clear evidence that cultural values significantly impact conformity levels. Specifically, collectivist cultures, which emphasize group harmony over individual interests, showed higher average rates of conformity. For example, their analysis found conformity decreased by 29% to 116% per unit increase in individualism, depending on the cultural value measure used. The study also revealed conformity has steadily declined in the US since the 1950s. Each year, conformity dropped by around 0.8% on average. 
these cultural factors actually had a larger influence on conformity than other variables like majority size, gender, and stimulus ambiguity that are typically considered important moderators. Based on these findings, the authors argue conformity research needs to focus more attention on assessing cultural variables and the processes by which they affect conformity. The meaning of conformity itself may differ cross-culturally, so we need to clarify what it represents in various cultural contexts. Well, I hope this overview has given you some insight into this influential meta-analysis on culture and conformity. The research question for researchers, Kundu and Cummins was, can conformity influence something we consider to be an integral part of our identities, namely morality? This research study included 33 participants, 17 in a control group and 16 in an experimental condition. In small groups, where three participants posed as peers and one was a real participant, they were instructed to make a series of decisions about moral dilemmas for which there was no right or wrong answer. An example of a dilemma given was as follows. A runaway trolley is approaching a fork in the tracks. On the left track are five people. On the right track is one person. If you do nothing, the trolley will go left, causing the deaths of five people. The only way to avoid this is to push a switch that will cause the trolley to go right, causing the death of the single person. Is it morally permissible to push the switch under the circumstances? The three participants posing as peers would then provide their predetermined rating out loud and the real participant would be last to provide their rating. This allowed the real participant of the study to hear the other rating before providing their own. If the real participant's moral judgments were swayed by the social consensus of the three people posing as peers, then we would expect that the ratings of each dilemma that is typically judged as permissible should receive lower permissibility ratings in the experimental condition than in the control condition. And also, the dilemmas that are typically judged as impermissible should receive higher permissibility ratings in the experimental condition than in the control condition. The results showed that the moral decisions that the real participants made were influenced by social context. Like any social science experiment, the Ashline study is challenging to replicate well, which led to many follow-up studies with conflicting results in the decades after its initial findings. One group of researchers believed that these inconsistencies, especially when it came to looking at correlations between age and Ashline-style conformity, were primarily caused by different levels of ambiguity as to what the correct answer was. They hypothesized that, if the correct answer was unambiguously clear, the test subjects would be less likely to go along with their peers if they chose differently, and that this tendency would get stronger the older the test subjects were. They tested this hypothesis on over 100 students from the age of 3 to 17. In the end, the researchers concluded that their hypotheses were correct and that there was a clear pattern of people becoming less willing to go along with what their peers chose if the answer was unambiguous, but that this pattern disappeared when increasing levels of ambiguity were introduced. They also noted that the levels of conformity among the older students approached zero and were significantly less than subjects in the same age group in the original Ashline study. The tendency to conform from group to group appears to be hard to pin down, especially as more noise and uncertainty are added to any given situation. As we distill the essence of our discourse on conformity, let us pivot to its profound implications on the realm of design. Our journey through various academic journals has illuminated the multifaceted nature of conformity, culminating in a critical examination of morality's interplay with societal norms. Now, we venture into the domain of user experience design, where the impact of conformity is both a challenge and a catalyst for innovation. On the canvas of design, conformity paints with a dual brush. It is the silent undercurrent that can both streamline user experience and stifle the vibrant diversity of thought and creativity. As UX designers, our mandate is to harness this force judiciously. On one side, we have the power to reduce conformity's grip. 
By fostering algorithmic diversity, we shatter the echo chambers, presenting users with a kaleidoscope of content that challenges the status quo. We empower users by handing them the brush to paint their digital experiences through customizable interfaces and tools that champion original content creation. And in the crucible of community and interaction, we celebrate the unique, the contrarian, ensuring that every voice can resonate within the digital agora. Yet, as we navigate this landscape, we must be vigilant of the threats that lurk within. The homogenization of user experience, a byproduct of an over-reliance on popular trends, threatens to reduce our rich tapestry to a monochrome. Dark UX patterns, those manipulative strands woven into the very fabric of interfaces, can lead users into a march of uniformity, devoid of critical thought. And within the walls of social media echo chambers, the amplification of majority opinions can silence the whispers of minority voices, diminishing the very diversity we strive to protect. In managing conformity, we are the custodians of balance. We must be as adept with the tools that dismantle conformity as we are with those that could inadvertently construct it. Our strategies must be intentional, our designs ethical, and our approach holistic. We are tasked with creating not just user experiences, but human experiences, rich, diverse, and engaging. As we close this chapter and look towards the horizon, we are reminded that the future of conformity in design is not a distant shore, but the ground beneath our feet, shifting with each step we take. It is a future we shape with every decision, every line of code, and every pixel we place with purpose. As we pivot from understanding the impact of conformity on design, let's cast our gaze forward to the horizons yet unexplored. The future beckons us to delve into ongoing research avenues that remain fertile with questions unanswered and paths untrodden. Firstly, the creative crucible of design ideation is often pressured by conformity. This dichotomy between innovation and adherence to trends calls for rigorous inquiry. How might conformity bias influence feedback during user testing sessions? And what measures can counteract this? Remote work has reshaped the fabric of collaboration, introducing new dimensions to groupthink. Our charge is to decode how virtual environments affect design team dynamics and decision-making, ensuring that distance doesn't dilute diversity of thought. And as our teams grow more culturally diverse, the impact of global perspectives on conformity in design emerges as a critical area of study. Can we foster a design ethos that embraces cultural nuances while resisting homogenization? In the realm of methodologies, the contrast between agile and waterfall frameworks offers a unique lens to examine how conformity shapes UX. The pedagogical strategies we employ to educate the next wave of designers must also encourage bold, independent thought to avoid the pitfalls of conformity. Ethics in design is not immune to the pressures of conformity. We must scrutinize how organizational structures influence design decisions and navigate the delicate balance between social norms, privacy, and innovation. Finally, peer pressure's role in the adoption of new design tools and sustainable practices demands our attention. As we equip ourselves with novel technologies, it's imperative to consider how collective influences shape the tools we choose and the designs we ultimately create. As we look ahead, let's commit to a future where research bridges the gaps in our understanding, allowing us to craft designs that are as diverse and dynamic as the users they serve. This is our challenge and our charge as we continue to push the boundaries of conformity in design. As we conclude our exploration of conformity in design, we recognize the journey does not end here. The paths we've charted highlight the intricate dance between innovation and conformity, individual creativity, and collective thought. Our exploration has revealed not just what we know, but more importantly, what we have yet to discover. This is an invitation for continued curiosity, a call to action for researchers and practitioners alike to delve deeper into the uncharted territories of design psychology. I encourage you now to reflect, inquiry, and challenge. 
Your questions and insights are invaluable as we collectively shape the future of design, a future informed by diverse perspectives and rigorous inquiry. Thank you for your engagement and thoughtful consideration throughout this presentation. Your questions and insights are the catalysts for ongoing exploration and understanding. As we part ways, remember that the slides and references from today's discussion are available for your further review and contemplation. Let's continue to question, to explore, and to innovate in the vast, evolving landscape of design and human interaction.